onto the main area within the HTML page, which is the body area. The body area is quite important because this is where we place everything that we want the users to see. So as we can see on the screen, all of the content inside the browser element here. Inside of our HTML, we will need to put the, the head on top of the body. Like we do with our own bodies, we have a head on top of them. Um, so we're gonna put a new tag in called body. And as I said before, we're gonna close the body tag so that we are making sure that we have our open and our close. Inside here is, as I say, everything that's going to be in here is going to be placed. Now, whenever we create a body area, it's always good practice to create a container inside that body. Because what we have is we create a number of HTML elements that are individual. So when we move maybe what we think is a group of area of HTML tags, it could affect how the others are presented in the page so by creating some form of uh, carrier bag or some sort of container we can make sure that if we was to move the overarching container everything inside it would move with it so what we do is we create something called a wrapper and we place this wrapper inside of a new tag that we're going to use called a divider or a div this div tag we need to make sure that we provide an id for it we can provide IDs and classes. IDs are elements where they should, for the most part, only occur once inside a web page. So, for example, we might have an ID for a wrapper because we want to make sure that everything inside of it moves with it. We could have one ID for a navigation because we should only really have one navigation. However, when we move on to use of classes, classes are where instances occur in more than one instance. So, for example, if we look at the navigation bar, it may have a number of navigation buttons. And those buttons should look identical apart from the name that is on top of the button. So, therefore, we would apply a class to that instance. But as I said earlier on, we will be adding an ID to this instance because it's only going to occur once and we're going to give it a value to equal wrapper. So that is our open bracket for the divider and I'm going to put the close bracket just below. So inside of our, our divider or in outside our div tag as we call them, we're going to be making sure that we place elements that make our website function properly. So as you can see, we have at the top here, we have some form of banner or uh, some form of header element. So I'm going to place a new tag inside of our wrapper called header. And then I'm going to do the close tag as well. And then under the header, we're going to attach another element, which is called a section. Whoops. And then we do the close tag. And then underneath the section, we're going to place a footer. So as you can see, if I space that out a little bit, we have the key elements that are contained within our pages. We have our banner, we're gonna have our content area, our section, and then at the very bottom, we have our footer. However, we do have this navigation element, and this navigation element will fall inside of the area between the header and the section. So inside here, we're going to create a new element. And that new element is going to be our divider. So this divider is gonna have both a class called navbar and an ID. And I'll explain this later. 
Now make sure for the purpose of this exercise your nav bar class uses lowercase and your nav bar ID uses a capital letter for N and for B. Then we're going to move on from that and we're going to add some new tags called anchored hyperlinks or A H ref. These anchor hyperlink references or AH references are used to navigate to external and internal pages. These are our, what, what make the World Wide Web function the way it does. The World Wide Web is a connection of pages that are connected via these hyperlinks and that is what makes it so powerful. For this example, what we're going to do is place a placeholder inside the ahref speech mark area, and this is going to be infilled later with the page names that we want to refer to. If, for example, you wanted to refer or link off to Google's website, you would replace this hashtag with http colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com. And then anytime someone clicks on this link, it would take them to that page. So we're going to finish off this anchor hyperlink and we're going to add a class to it. And we're going to give the class of active. And this will be very important for us to use later. Once I've finished the active element, I'm then going to close the open part of the bracket. And then I'm going to do the close tag for this anchored hyperlink. Now, you don't need to type in ahref and all of the forward slash. It is just simply forward slash a. And this is called an anchored hyperlink. I want to create a number of these because these make up our buttons up here on our navigation bar. So I'm going to copy that line and I'm going to paste it. four times. However, what I want to do this time is I want to take out the class active. So what this is, is all about how this button is the active button at this moment in time. So if you look over on our page here, you'll see that the home button is highlighted. That is because it's the active button. That gives the users a quick and easy indication as to the page that they are on. If I was on this page here, I would move this class active element inside of this bracket here. So just to make things clearer, I'm going to have home, hashtag, or unit, hashtag, unit hashtag and unit hashtag so that is how we create these elements for what's the active button and what's not the active button and how we link off to them